The Build Show is on the road today. I'm in Wisconsin, and I gotta tell you, this Texas boy is cold. There is literally snow on the ground and I'm at the job site. So unusual for me. So here's the deal. We're in Wisconsin visiting Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes. And these guys sell a package, like what you see behind me, that local builders like me, or like this builder we're about to meet, put together. And they've got two different varieties of these log and timber homes. They've got some that are literally logs that are stacked together. And then this house, which is a bit of a hybrid. We actually have some standard framing with some logs attached and this really beautiful, iconic, kind of mountain custom luxury style that you see here. They actually do all kinds of stuff, but this is a good example of, of what they do. Now here's the deal. I've got two purposes for this video. If you're watching this video, I'm gonna tell you about the way they build. And like I said, they've got a couple different ways they can build houses. We're gonna run through all the wall sections, the details, the flashing, the caulking. There's some really cool stuff here that I've not seen before. So I'm excited to learn about that. But also if you're a builder, if you're a general contractor watching this, these guys get prospects from all over North America. They want to build one of these houses on a lot in Maine or in Washington State or in Oklahoma or Texas even, and they need good builders in those locations to put together this package. And they're literally shipping everything to you. You put the foundation together, almost everything you need to build the house comes from here, right here in Wisconsin and then you put it together as a general contractor. So my secondary goal for this is for you to be interested potentially in reaching out to them and saying, hey, I'm a GC in uh, Wisconsin, I'm a GC in Maine, and I'm interested in being on your builder list, your builder list of preferred builders where they actually send a client to you to build with you. This is gonna be a really fun video, guys. Today's video is sponsored by Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes. Let's get going. All right, y'all, let me introduce you to Todd. Todd and his brother, the owners of Golden Eagle. And Todd, before we jump into your whole process, I love meeting builders that are second generation. Tell me the story of how your dad started this company. My dad was a builder building basically track homes, and he got a little tired of building two-by homes with drywall. He wanted to build a home for himself that was unique and different. Mm -hmm. He decided to build a full log home for himself back in 1966. And not only did he love it, it was the house of his dreams, but other people wanted one. And that's where we launched, the, or my dad launched the log and timber home business way back in 66. That's pretty cool. So you guys have been doing this a while. And most people like this client are coming to you first before they have a builder. And so I told these guys, I'm interested in, in telling them the process of how you guys build, but also I'm interested in kind of teaching these builders what's going on and how easy it might be for them to build one of your packages. Very often the customer sees one of our YouTubes. Mm -hmm. Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes has a wonderful YouTube channel. And the MC of the videos is generally my son, Zach. <laughs> so I'm extra proud and giving that a plug. That's pretty awesome, Dad. Good job. So uh, people call us or they email us. And uh, a lot of times they just start out like, how much would it cost for a home similar to this one to be built in Montana, Colorado? Texas, wherever, yep. and we give them a rough idea where they're headed on price. And uh, if they're comfortable with that, we'll have a, a much longer discussion. Maybe that will lead to us engineering and drawing plans for their new location. Yep. And then at some point, uh, we introduce them to uh, a builder two or three, and they can meet the builders and kind of choose which general contractor they'd like to work with. Got it. So that's, that's part of it here. We're looking for more general contractors, and we're hoping your channel can help us reach them. I love it. Good deal. I'll tell you what, it's cold out. I'm actually literally freezing right now because it's 30 degrees. You're probably totally, you could probably be out here in a t-shirt. Yeah, right? I told Matt today's a, a warm day for December. <laughs> it is not a warm day. It's 30 out and it's windy. Let's go in, let's show these guys a little bit of this construction. And you actually have the builder here on site that I can talk to you. Yeah, right? yeah, you could actually interview a builder that's built many of our homes. All right. And maybe learn how it works through him. Let's go meet him. Ed, this is a good looking house, man. I'm impressed. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate you having me out to your job. So this is not the first time you've built a Golden Eagle package, right? No, we've done about 30 of their houses so far. Okay, so you've done this before. Talk to me, if you can, rewind in your mind what it was like the first time you built one of these. I mean, this could be a little intimidating. We've got all kinds of beams. We've got heavy timbers. There's a lot happening in this house. Was it intimidating? And what was it like on your first build? 
Uh, the first house was not of this grand of structure. Mm -hmm. So it was more, more like a conventional build, except for it had log siding on it and that. But the plans are so detailed that they give you. It's, I don't know, 25 pages roughly that yep. you go through. So if you have a question on something, you can just flip through the pan, plans and usually find exactly what you need Got in it. order to go through it. Now I'm gonna, uh, later in the video, stay tuned guys, I'm gonna kind of walk through the different wall assemblies you can do uh, with Golden Eagle. But this house, Ed, tell me about how you built this house. What's the, what's the framing? What's the siding? Uh, what's kind of the package look like from Golden Eagle? So this house has a combination of two by six walls and two by eight walls mm -hmm. on the exterior and then the interior is two by six and two by four. Gotcha. So, so, and, so in fact, this is kind of like traditional framing here, but you've got logs on the outside, logs on the inside. I don't see really any drywall, but it's built in a rather traditional way, right? Yes, it is built in a traditional way. There's no drywall inside this house. You can get drywall in your packages sure. through Golden Eagle. The only drywall in this house is in the garage and that's because of fire code. Okay, that makes sense. Now, talk to me about working with Golden Eagle. My understanding is that you as the builder, uh, you're getting your concrete foundation ready, the excavator, the concrete's all here. And then how much of what we see here and how much of this house actually comes from Golden Eagle? On the first load, we ended up getting the roughing material. So that'd be like the floor, the OSB, the studs for the walls. Mm -hmm. And then on the next load, we would get like the, the shingles and the trusses and things like that. You don't get everything dumped on you at once. That's nice. You get the material as you need it. Kind of staggered as you need it. Yes. But my understanding is almost everything I'm seeing here has come from Golden Eagle and as part of their package, right? So windows, trusses, framing material, all the logs that we're seeing here, all this kind of comes from those guys, right? All of this comes from Golden Eagle. Uh, the only thing that hasn't come from Golden Eagle on this job so far is the insulation and the flooring. Okay, and other than that, everything's shipped out from Golden Eagle. So if you're building remotely, that's kind of a huge benefit to work with them, right? Because you don't have to source your screws, you don't have to source your caulking, you don't have to source all these products. Everything's coming from those guys in one big package. Yeah, it's really nice because you get the material that you need when you need it to work with the house. Now talk to me about the selection process. You know, you've got a lot of options here from stain colors to window choices. Were you involved in that process or how does that work? I was not involved in that process. Golden Eagle has a team that takes care of that themselves. So they have a, a salesman that deals with the homeowner at first, and then they have a selection team that goes through all the different colors that you see throughout the house, wow. the color of the windows, the, the roof everything, they take care of that, so I'm not involved at all. Sounds like it's pretty easy on you as a builder working with these guys. That saves me a lot of time, yeah. instead of sitting down with a customer and going through it. Yeah, I can see that. Now, did you need much specialty equipment? Like for instance, this is some of the interior trim on the house. This is an outside corner post, I'm assuming, they're going somewhere? Yes, so we have a 16 inch saw to cut some of the bigger stuff, mm -hmm. but on a lot of the houses, we just use a regular 10 inch saw in order to do it. This one has more mass, so we had to get a, a bigger saw for this. But otherwise, it's normal, just conventional tools. Okay, so it really wasn't that difficult for you to make that switch from conventional building to the way you're building with these guys? No, ju just a couple of different tools we had to pick up, nothing that was too huge. Gotcha. And are you a builder that does in-house framing or do you sub that out? Uh, we do all the framing. We do all the rough framing, we do all the finish framing. Um, we're, we're from start to finish. Wow, that's great. So I sub things out uh, and I'm wondering, you know, I use, I've used the same framer for a dozen years. How hard will it be for me and my framer to kind of figure out the process, especially working remote? Because you're here in Wisconsin, you're not that far really from Golden Eagle. What would it be like for me in Texas if I had one of their packages and hadn't built before? Uh, the first house you would go through, they actually walk you through the process with the plans. Mm -hmm. So once you go through that, if you have any further questions, they got a 1-800 number that you can call and they'll answer and open up the set of plans and run through whatever questions you have. That's pretty cool. And my understanding is that they're doing the architecture, they're doing the engineering. Uh, I even saw some of their 3D details on their plans that looked really good. How are their plans compared to other architects or designers you've worked with over the years? 
There's over 25 pages in their plans. There's more detail in their plans than any of their plans I've ever looked at. That's pretty nice. So every, every corner will have a detail on it. How the roof goes together will have a detail on it. How the window gets trimmed will have a detail on it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Sounds like it's been good to work with these guys. And if you've done 30, my, my suspicion is you're expecting or hoping to do more with them as well. Oh, I'll continue working with Golden Eagle. Good stuff, man. Hey, I appreciate you having me out to the job site, brother. Thank you, Matt. Let's go check out their showroom in town. All right, we're back at Golden Eagle HQ. They've got a model home that they built about 20 years ago here. They've got a design center and then all this property back here they've owned since the 60s and you've got logs everywhere. This is really cool, but let's start at the model home. You know, when I think of log homes and log home construction, this is definitely what I think of where you've got these traditional round logs on the outside. This is definitely the iconic look for me. And then when you get in, this, this does it for me. I love this look, this real traditional, uh, I don't know if you'd call it traditional or if you call it rustic, but where you can see those logs as if they're coming through into the space from the inside of the out. I'm assuming this is traditional log home construction, if that's a, if I'm using the terms correctly, but seeing the beams, the rafters, all the wood on the inside. Uh, my family and I rent a VRBO in Colorado when we go skiing, and this really feels like that space to me. Uh, you've got eight foot ceilings in here. You know, again, this is like 20 years old, so this uh, may not be built exactly the same today. I could see people to go into taller ceilings, but I really like this look. This resonates with me. I think Todd is in here somewhere. Hey, Todd, you around, bud? Todd, I like this model home, man. This, is, this has been here for a while though, right? Yeah, this one's nearly 20 years old. Is that right? And if you think this is great, wait till you see our showroom and our factory. I'm looking forward to it. So I would call this traditional. Uh, yeah. What would you guys call this style? We, we do call it traditional. This is a true full log where you, you take the logs and stack them. Okay. We can also offer a log home mm -hmm. in a half log system. It's a two by six wall, similar to the home you were at earlier. Yep. We can also offer a uh, quarter log which is a lesser expensive version of the half log. Okay. Same thing, two by six framed wall is typical. Got it. And then we do so much with the timber framing today. We do a solid timber framing, so the house is structural, mm -hmm. or we can do a cosmetic timber framing. And that's what you saw this morning too. It was mostly cosmetic. Gotcha. And that, that's more affordable. And you can put your posts where you wanna put your posts instead of where they have to be. So let's peel back the layers on this house just a little bit. So when I, like for instance, this is corner here that I'm seeing where the logs are stacking up and we can see that full log. The first floor walls are like that. It's, it's you know, for lack of a better term, it's Lincoln logs like I yeah. played with as a yeah. kid. The, yeah. Those logs stack up, the corners inter, intersect or interweave, but then it's traditional framing from that plate line up. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Usually the first story with our full log is solid log, mm -hmm. and then the second story, the lofted area, that's usually framed. Okay. Golden Eagle makes, remember I said full log, half log, and quarter log? Yep. So we can actually get your exterior gables and your interior gables in the upstairs to look exactly like full log. And then you never know that it's But not. we like to use framing up there so your walls are super solid. Yeah. Otherwise, sometimes when you have a lot of glass and the logs are only this long, right. we have to worry a little bit about the yeah, strength. you've got movement. Yeah. So like this gable that I'm seeing here, a ton of glass, doors, windows upstairs. It's probably full log until you get to the windows and then that's framed beyond Exactly. That. And that's a great example of our quarter log and how you cannot tell that it's not full log. It's just yeah. amazing how we do that. And we make all that here. And then the roof system, I think I've seen uh, on your YouTube channel, you guys are using parallel cord trusses, meaning a, a two by truss, but the cords are parallel to each other. So your pitch on the inside, your pitch on the outside right. match each other, but it's frankly pretty easy for me as the builder to frame that on the job site, yeah. right? Well, all of what you said is true. And I think a big part of our success is we try to keep it uh, easy for the builder, common mm -hmm. for the builder. Yep. We don't want to introduce you to a bunch of new things you haven't seen before. Sure. And uh, parallel so cord trusses like are awesome. Me, who's not done even this, a guy like you <laughs> couldn't figure it out. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And we, we think the same way with our floor systems. There's still companies out there that would provide a, a timber floor system, where our floor system is usually floor truss. And if somebody wants to see a timber on the bottom side, we'll have one bolted up there later to give you that look. That's gotcha. that's common for us. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now, what I really want to see, Todd, is all those wall sections that you told me about. Oh. Where can I find those? Well, those are in the showroom, and that's our next stop, and that's going to be awesome. Let's head over to the showroom. 
Okay guys, we're at the Design Center now for Golden Eagle. A ton of different options they've got on Showcase here, and I really like how they're showing for both interiors and exteriors. We've got color options, texture options, all, all that kind of stuff. This gray actually really appeals to me. But this showroom's a really good space to be able to bring your clients and see the options. Hey Matt. I know Zach, you're from the YouTube hey, channel. I'm a big fan of your show. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> the third generation. I like it. Appreciate you being I've here. I've seen your video, Zach. Good to finally meet you, man. <laughs> yeah, great to meet you as well. So I, I asked Zach to give you the tour of the showroom. He really knows what's going on. He definitely so, knows. Okay, so awesome, have fun, man. Have fun, you guys. Okay, thanks, Todd. Well, once again, thanks for visiting us. We have clients visiting us from all over the country. This is a one-stop shop design center showroom. So as you can see, these are our very unique wall and ceiling finishes. Right above us, we've got our mortise and tenon joinery. Oh, so, yeah, so you're showing different truss options in yeah. here as well, aren't you? So those are Douglas fir trusses with a traditional mortise and tenon joinery, which mm -hmm. means no mechanical fasteners. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so those are structural. We can also incorporate timber accents in decorative elements of the home. We don't say no to anything here at Golden Eagle. So we've been building homes for about 60 years now, started uh -huh. by my grandpa, as you probably that's already pretty know. pretty awesome. I know. And, and it's interesting to me how you guys are you know, log and timber, and yet you also are showing some traditional siding options. Some people want that, I guess. Yeah, right? that's a great observation. So we actually have many Golden Eagle homes that are in ordinary subdivisions. You may not notice that it's oh, a Golden that right? Eagle home, but then on the inside, there are timber elements. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> this guy always surprises me. It's been here for many years. See, what makes our homes unique that's and special cool. is that you can do all of these special customizations. I like that. So frankly, we don't see stuff like this all too often. Yeah, I can't but imagine. As you may notice in our model home, we've got carvings and all that stuff on the timbers and posts. The corrugated really speaks to me. I see a lot of that in Texas. And check out the bark siding. Yeah. Dang, that's cool. Now, at first glance, it looks like all this is real bark, but actually half of it is a maintenance-free bark, huh. and the other is true bark. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. They both look fake. nearly identical. I didn't know. Now, something that makes us very unique is that we're doing all the plumbing fixtures as well as all the cabinetry. Wow. We're working with the clients from the beginning on designing the home. Now, the first step of that is we want to make sure we're within a good budget for what they're looking to spend. And also, before we start designing those floor plans, mm -hmm. we want to know what the land's going to be like. All so right. we'll do a site evaluation, get all the surveys that are necessary so that we know if the land will allow for a walkout wall or really any sort of special site work. Yeah, because all the architecture is coming from you guys, even all the engineering, the foundation plans, all that stuff, uh, down to where we're in the cabinet and plumbing showroom, even when it's time for those finished uh, plumbing fixtures, they're coming from a truck from you guys, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, to get started on those design services, it's gonna cost anywhere between 10 to 25 grand. I mean, a lot of that varies depending on the complexity of the home, yep. as well as how large it is. Got it. And then the next step after that is we've gone through all these plan revisions. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to do all the finishing touches as well as to begin the engineering on the home. Right. So we've got 26 anchors here on campus mm -hmm. where we're storing these materials ahead of time. That way when the general contractor needs it, he schedules that delivery and doesn't hold up the job site whatsoever. You know, think of all the millwork, oh my all the cabinetry. So, so much. not only are we pre-planning all of this ahead of time, but then we're buying it and it's ready to go when it's needed. That's so awesome, man. Let's keep going in the yeah. showroom. I want to see what else you've yeah, got. Yeah, this is pretty neat back here. Um, all of this is custom cabinetry. Yep. Any sort of color or wood species that a person would like. Any kind of stain color you want. Yeah, it's all top of the line. We've got a custom door hardware over there, whether it's Schlage or M-Tech. We've got all of Pella's window options. Yeah, so Pella is your partner, and you guys, as you're designing the house, know exactly what the rough openings are. We do. And Pella's actually shipping direct to your job site, whatever they choose, whether it's a, a lower cost vinyl product, uh, their fiberglass Imperva series, or what's their more top of the line wood with a cladding on there. Yeah, called. so I can't remember there's all their, their lifestyle names. series, which also has a triple pane option with a hinge triple pane where you can have the window fixtures inside there, like your blinds nice. and shades. They also have their architect series. Mm -hmm. So within that architect series, anything is possible. And weren't you or your dad telling me that uh, you're going to start doing more and more triple glaze in the coming years as codes change? It's going to be required in a lot of places to go to triple glaze it is. rather than double. Yeah, it is. So not only has that just been an option for many years with Pella, but it's also something that we like to explore the option for clients that are building in very cold climates. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with the design standards moving forth in the future, it's gonna become a standard here in the, 
you know, that's pretty the cool. Short term. The other thing that I think is really interesting about you guys, Zach, is you know not only does the log package and all the kind of timber, as I would call it, but like the whole framing package that's not tradition that's not traditional log, let's call it, is coming from you. So that your engineer is designing the trusses. You're even finding the truss manufacturer in Wyoming, let's say, for that build or Maine to deliver those trusses. They're being designed by your team. And then the builder has everything coming out from Golden Eagle, mm -hmm. uh, even though you're not actually making these trusses, right? You're partnering with a local truss manufacturer. Exactly. And at your showroom, I thought this was kind of cool. You're showcasing, hey, we can do traditional two by floor joists. We can do eye joists, which you can get typically a longer span, and these are gonna be trimmed on the job. We can, be, we can do trimmable uh, trust floors, or we can do a true engineered uh, floor whatever makes sense for that builder locally. Yeah, exactly. So you have so many great building principles on your show and all of that can be adopted into our hybrid wall system, mm -hmm. which could be anything from starting with a conventionally built home yep. to having zip or zip R on the exterior, yep. anything that the client would be looking for. So that would be the application That's of cool. whether it's quarter log or half log siding, yep. maintenance free product, we have concrete logs and all that. That's awesome. But when we got our start, when my grandpa started the company back in 66, he started by stacking full logs on top of each other. And there's so much energy efficiency associated with a thermal yeah. mass yeah. of full logs. I like that, I gotta say, that appeals to me as a builder. And how about I show you our, our samples that we have on the other side of the showroom? Let's actually walk this way, because okay. I think as we're walking, I saw some things that'd be interesting to point out. Yeah. Uh, in that, you know, stair components come from you guys, hardware, uh, you've got the traditional door uh, display, like I see when I go to BFS or one of these other suppliers. Even like carved mantles, if somebody wants to elect to get a carved mantle. Mm -hmm. uh, all the interior doors are coming. Uh, but this is definitely what I wanted to see. This is really cool. So you've got four different logs. We'll come back to the window in one second. Yeah. But four different, what's the difference between these four stacked, what I would call traditional log construction? At first glance, it's the difference between the, the appearance of the log, mm -hmm. round or flat log. Okay. With the round log, you've got your traditional hand peeling applied to it. Okay, so this is the round log we're talking right here. Yep, exactly. Now, when you go to a flat surface, we can also add this hand hewn finish mm, as nice. well. I like that. Now, I'm highlighting the, the hand peeling and hand hewning. There are other variations of different finishes that are available at Golden Eagle. Yep. If there's anything that you ever see somewhere, we can provide it through Golden Eagle, whether it's log finishes or sizes. So these are eight inch logs. We're up to an, so that's eight inches wide by eight inches tall. Mm -hmm. We're now at eight inches wide, 12 inches tall. This is a 10 by 10, and we even have 12 by 12 logs. Wow. Yeah. So, so that, that big display that I had bumped into back there, that was a big 12 by 12, a 12 display. By 12. So let me nerd out for you guys for a little bit on this, because I suspect some of you are going to comment. So this wall assembly here is, is particularly appealing because it's how we built in America for really several hundred years, right? It's, it's a log, but this is a much more modern way than, I uh, forget the, the, uh, the father and then this old house, or in the uh, Little House in the Prairie series. What was his name? Boy, I'm uh, not sure. Then the way he built his house in, in that book series. What you're looking at though is uh, Eastern White Pine, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And these guys are manufacturing those logs, so we've got straight, round, whatever you want finish-wise. In this particular one, they've got a bit of a tongue and groove kind of slip on there. And then they're using a, a crushable gasket. This looks like some kind of neoprene gasket in the center for air tightness. And then two beads of a Sashco, what is this log uh, caulking Well, called? this is a log builder caulk. We also have the concealed caulk available. Okay, so log builder. So two beads of caulking, which by the way, are gonna be dark for the lifetime of the caulk. They're gonna be in between there. All they're doing is keeping air from flowing from inside to out. And then as the logs, let's see, that's the right one there right here. Go. As the logs stack up, the builder on site, me, the framer, they're gonna screw these together with these really long uh, structural screws. Yeah. Uh, Fasten Master Timberlock is one brand name, but some other people make these as well. And then they're gonna be screwed as they're stacked up. And then after this log has a, a coat of finish applied to it, then they're gonna come back with one more bead of caulking on the inside and the outside. And if you wanted to do more traditional, what I would call chinking, yes. uh, like what the old style, 100 year old log houses, 
-hmm. Sashko makes a sanded version of that that looks more like a chinking too, yes. right? Yep. Are you do. okay? Did I explain that well? That's perfect, Matt. Yep. So, so you mentioned the thermal mass. I think this is cool and I want to highlight this. You know, you can actually build a really darned efficient house out of nothing but wood. And if you saw my series of videos that I made when I went to Switzerland a couple years ago, there was a Swiss builder that I, that I visited called Kuhn Holtzbau, and probably one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever been to in my life. In Switzerland, just as cold as Wisconsin, the walls were like 12 inches thick. They were solid wood. Now they did laminated wood rather than solid timber, but they said to me, Matt, as long as I make that building airtight and I put enough wood on there, I've got thermal mass, and don't forget, wood is an insulator. We don't have to use fiberglass uh, or spray foam. We can use wood as an insulator. It's around R1-ish per inch. So this 10 inch log is roughly R10, but that R10 doesn't tell the whole story because of what you mentioned, which is thermal mass. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lightweight houses that just have two by framing, you know, a two by four frame Texas house that has some crappy cardboard sheathing, uh, a fiberglass bat and some half inch drywall, it's pretty lightweight, there's not a lot of mass there. This wall, this white pine, solid pine, once it gets to temperature, whether it's hot in the wintertime or cold in the summer, it's gonna wanna stay that temperature because of that thermal mass. And it takes a lot of additional heat or cold input for that to move to the inside. So even though the R value may be lower here, this is a really great wall. I would like to build a house with this system. What we find is that on our coldest days here in Wisconsin, as well as anywhere throughout the United States, when you still go and touch the exterior wall mm -hmm. from the right inside here. of the home, yeah. it's it not still cold. feels warm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been so that's totally the thermal mass at play. It's much easier on the HVAC systems. Yeah. I totally Another great sense. thing is that all of our products are kiln dried. Mm, so I like that. What that allows is there's no unpredictable settling or movement mm -hmm. on the logs. Mm -hmm. Additionally, when you pair that with our high performance stains, we get great longevity out of the finish on these logs. That makes sense. So clearly the inside would never need to be stained again. Sure. And then on the exterior, you're going to get great life out of that. So those giant logs that I see stacked back in your 20 plus acres in the backyard, yeah. those are un uh, kiln dried, right? Correct. You have they're they're coming uh, straight from the mill. Let's let's call it. Yep. Now you mentioned, I think you or your dad said earlier that you only buy those a certain time of the year. Yep. Can you can you tell me about that? We buy those in the cold months. That's when the sap is in the root of the tree. Okay. That way, when that tree is harvested, we aren't sequestering all that sap in the actual tree that we're manufacturing. Huh. So what's important with that is that we're air drying those logs mm -hmm. out in our yard for anywhere between a year to two years. Wow. We're evaporating the free water within the log, but there's still water trapped within the cell structure of that timber. So we mechanically break that cell structure by putting it in our kiln. Okay, and you've got a giant kiln we back do. there. Yeah, 100,000 board foot kiln. We've got another one under construction. Holy cow. There's just such great demand for these kiln dried products. It also allows us to ensure a level of quality. Now, another great benefit is that it makes them sanitized. So phytosanitary requirements. Okay great for our homes that are being built in Canada. Man, that's so cool. That's yeah. wild. And then I also notice that you're shipping these to the job, not on uncovered semis, but on those, uh, what do they call that when there's a, when there's a covered semi? Yeah, trailer? we call it a, a curtain side. Curtain side, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. And I, I saw a package that was about to be shipped out back there. It had everything in there. It had logs, it had two by, it had the decking for the house, for the probably for the front porch. Uh, the Simpson connections were in there. Everything's coming from you guys. Yeah. Well. Let's get you toward that end of the facility. But before we do so, I want to show you a little bit more of what we have in our design center showroom yeah, here. Let's do it. We've got stone on display. Also our interior and exterior stains. Okay, yeah. Uh, special screen porch, three seasons room systems. Now, as we head this way, we'll see more of those mortise and tenon timber trusses. This is where we oh, bring yeah. everyone together. Now, what's important? So all your clients are generally coming here to the showroom to make these final selections and see and touch everything. They are. So even if you're building in Maine, you're flying in, you're seeing the showroom. They're meeting with you or one of your salespeople, uh, and really making all those final selections. Yeah. We are we're structured really well to be able to do all this remotely, but oftentimes clients prefer to visit us. I would. It's an I'd easy highly flight recommend in. you come. Yeah, definitely. Pretty cool to see. It is. And then during all this planning of the home. We make sure that we bring everyone here together at Golden Eagle and we do plan reviews. Yeah. So Smart. that way you get this you get 
different input from people that have been in the industry their whole life. Really smart. Yeah. Man, so good to meet you, Zach. Yeah. Uh, I heard that your, not your brother, but your cousin. Yes. Uh, works back in the mill shop. He does. And I know these builders watching this are going to want to see how some of that wood gets milled. Hey, before we head back to the mill shop, this really uh, is intriguing. I got to show you this. This is a Pella window that they're showing how they flash. And this is something I was trying to kind of wrap my brain around before I got here. Like, if you've got log construction, how do you put a window in there and keep it watertight? Well, here's what they do. This window has a two by buck, and you can see the rough opening is actually, uh, you know, an inch and a half, uh, inch and three quarters wider than the window on the log cut. So that, let's flip this around and go to the inside. We've got a two by buck that comes from these guys as well. So what you're looking at here is, uh, I'm guessing that's a two by 10, maybe a two by eight. I'm sure it's gonna depend on the thickness of the log, but it's pre-curved. It's coming curved from Golden Eagle. And if you come around here, you can see why. There's the nail that's holding this buck in place. And that nail is nailed into that kerf cut with the washer so that if this log moves, right? If this log has some kind of vertical movement on it for moisture, for temperature, whatever reason, this window in this buck is not gonna be stressed by that. And that's gonna be able to move in that slot. And then for flashing, let's go back around here. Check this out, this is pretty cool. The flange of the window is probably cocked to that buck for waterproofing. And then this flashing comes from Golden Eagle as well, pre-bent for you. And you can see the builder has kerf cut the log there the flashing is led into the kerf. There's probably a bead of caulking in there as well. And then there's a bead of caulking behind this flashing to the flange. And then as you go up, everything's shingled. So we're gonna start with the sill, then the jams, then the head flashing. Those are all lapped correctly. And the final step, a lead in flashing above this uh, kind of log trim they're using at the head. So this is kerf cut in it's caulked and then this is going to have that water go to the front of the window, not the back. And then the final step there, it looks like again, they're using some of that same Sashco log caulking uh, from the log to the window. Isn't that crazy? I've never seen that before. I was always wondering how you installed windows and flash that when you don't have these normal flat surfaces to use, uh, you know, zip tape or any of those kind of normal flashings that I use. Pretty fun. Anyways, let's get back to the mill shop. Oh, baby, I like seeing the mill shop. Check this out. Welcome to one of our manufacturing centers. This is where those timbers that have been air drying on our property, after they go through the kiln, uh -huh. they come in here and they're given their shape, their texture, and everything is being graded out. Check out these giant carbide bits. Look at that thing. These are phenomenal mats. Holy so cow. we manufacture over 400 different log and timber profiles and all of these have a purpose. The woodworker in me is really jealous of the amount of horsepower that it would take to drive a shaper bit like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've collected enough bits here where really anything can be done at Golden Eagle. Yeah, so all those profiles I saw in your model home with that house under construction comes from a couple of these buildings that you've got mill shops in. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. So right behind me, these timbers, they're gonna be sent through this planer mm -hmm. where they're given their texture and their shape. Okay. And then also on the other side of the building, which I've got a display I wanna show you over there. I think you're gonna like this. Before we go, one quick qu yeah. question. I'm seeing a bunch of scrap in this cardboard box. Talk to me about uh, waste and scrap. What do you guys do with all the leftover wood parts? Yeah, so first of all, remember all this is kiln dried. So that's mm -hmm. very special material. Yep. And now all these sawdust, all the shavings, mm -hmm. all that gets put into horse bedding. Oh, okay. So there's really minimal waste, but for the waste that there is, there's a good resaleable market for that. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I saw a tractor trailer on the side, I think your dad was telling me, it's just all these random parts that someone actually buys and wants those pieces. And then for your whole operation, you've got a dumpster outside that's about this size right. for all the kind of office trash, and that's really it. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's go check out that display. Great. All right, Zach, let's end it up with a couple of uh, displays. So what do we got here? Well, first of all, this is our vertical corner system. Uh -huh. Very popular on the timber style homes. Yeah, I like that. A bit more of a modern feel to it. Yep. Also saddle notch, 
Now, what's important with all of our log profiles is we've got a flat point here that oh, they're all able to be saddle stable. notch, meaning it's got that curve on there and it's sitting down in there. Right. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is a dovetail. Ooh, I like that. And we've got a non traditional dovetail here where it slopes all the water away from the house. Mm, smart. We've got another dovetail here. Now, this is the this is the system that I thought you'd be interested Ooh, in. Ooh, I like this. Check it out. So it's full log construction, yep. but we're splitting the log in half so we can put a couple layers of insulation. Yes. And did I see on your sign, this is like an R31 wall? Yep, it is an R31 wall. That's pretty cool. So, and then really it changes the thermal mass of whichever logs we put on the outside right. or the inside. This right. certainly doesn't even have to be log. That's where you could do sheetrock if you'd like right. or a tongue and groove. Could be whatever, whatever the client you want. prefers. Yeah. Now this foam is applied. This one is horizontally applied, and these mm -hmm. are vertical. That way the seams don't overlap. Yep. And then Smart. we've got a, a thermal break there too. I really like that. And then this last display. What's going on with this guy? Well, this is a log, essentially a half log, or it could be a quarter log, mm -hmm. and it's milled out of a full log corner. So this is still one piece right there. Now this display, it's just showing it on conventional construction. You could easily have uh, any sort of building system that you'd like. Yeah, so you could have zip or zip R on there, traditional two by framing, you know, closed cell spray foam, rock wool on the inside, whatever. But on the outside, no one have any idea this wasn't full log construction. Yeah, exactly. And in effect, it's, I hate to call it this, but in effect, it's kind of like siding uh, at that point. Yeah. That's really cool. But the way that you did this corner uh, really, I mean, you have no idea that's not a full log on there. Right. From the exterior, no one would have any idea that's not a full log home. So there's really anything can be done with Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes, whether it's uh, maintenance-free steel siding or anything of the sort. And then with this system, you can apply so many of the great build principles that we see on your channel yep. can be incorporated into this too. I love it. And speaking of channels, guys, if you're not familiar with Zach's channel, uh, go check them out. We'll put a link in the description. Tons of videos. It's really a little more consumer focused. Tons of great walkthroughs and beautiful images. Um, really, really fun to meet you and take the tour, guys. Really Thank appreciate you, it. And I said at the beginning of the video, if you're a builder watching this, my main intention was to sell you on the process. Uh, you saw the two generations. You're the third generation now from your grandfather that started the company. It's a really high integrity, very cool company that would make it really easy for me as a builder to build one of their houses. So when they've got clients that come to them because of Zach's videos, they're looking to partner with a local builder wherever that customer's site is to actually be built. They don't build anything, they just build all the components and ship it to you, to me as the builder. So I'll have a link in the description so you can get a hold of them. Uh, they would love to get to know you. They'd love to uh, feed you business and give you prospects. Uh, typically when a prospect comes to them, they're trying to find somewhere between two and three builders that they can talk to. Uh, and just like my process, I wanna get to know clients before I sign on the dotted line with them and vice versa. It's that two-way interview process. So get a hold of them, uh, have some conversations, see if you're a good fit. And if you are, they're gonna add you to their database and you can tell them, hey, I build within, for me, 45 minutes of this area of Austin, Texas. If they get a client who's in that circle, they'll put you on the list uh, and potentially call you for a project. So Golden Eagle may be contacting you about future work. And like we met with Ed earlier in the video, he's done, I think he told me like 30 of your houses now. He loves working with you guys. Uh, it's a great symbiotic relationship. And, and he mentioned after the camera stopped rolling, he hasn't advertised in years. He hasn't spent a penny on advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Matt, I, we, the way we look at it is the viewers who watch your channel, those are very conscientious builders. Mm -hmm. Those are builders that are looking to do their best and always step up the game. And yep. our clients, they're visiting us looking for an exceptional build experience. Yep. If we can pair them up with an excep exceptional general contractor, yeah. that goes a long way. That's right. That's right. We call ourselves builders, but really we're general contractors. You know, I've got all the guys that get out there and put the foundation in place. I've got either my in-house or my sub framing crew. I've got electricians and plumbers and HVAC guys. Um, I can handle everything. So if you're like me, get a hold of these guys and get, get your name on the list. Zach, thanks for having me, brother. Thanks, Matt. Really appreciate it. Guys, link in the description for all the stuff we talked about for all of the Golden Eagle folks and go check out their channel. If you're not currently a subscriber though, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.